Welcome to the Maritimes. In this episode, we'll take you on our geocache road trip as we explore through some amazing places in New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island. Join us for smiles, seafood, and so much more as we peruse a pair of pretty provinces. So grab a claw and a pint and sit back and enjoy another Canadian geocache road trip adventure. After we left Quebec City and traveled along the St. Lawrence, we made our way to New Brunswick with, of course, several geocaching stops along the 400 kilometer drive. Our first goal was to visit Heartland, New Brunswick, which not only is home to the world's longest covered bridge, but also to a very amusing geoart. First, however, the bridge. Spanning the St. John River in the heart of Heartland, we present to you, fine viewers, the longest covered bridge in the world measured in feet for some reason. Now, as for that dirty windshield, after enjoying our 390 meters covered crossing and a stunning St. John sunset, we were off to our beautiful B&B &B to motivate ourselves for much more moose madness. The moose Jew art consists of 135 caches spread across a wonderful variety of locations in eastern New Brunswick, capped off with a fantastic finale as we skedaddled ourselves to the crowning cache of this collection. Hey, Mrs. Monkey spotted it. Good job. <laughs> All right, so we've got tied off here. And up there's Moose Antler. And there it is. There's the final for this one. Well, it's not the final for the whole series. The whole series doesn't have a final, but as a key part that you have to hike out to for the Moose Geo Art, that's pretty awesome. Moving along through Fredericton and to the southern shoreline, we made our way to the Hopewell Rocks, a spectacular site that should be on your must explore list. Uh, Mrs. Monkey, finally back at the Hopewell Rocks. What do you think? Pretty impressive? Yep. Guys, we are in Castle Cove uh, in Hopewell Cape. Uh, this is part of the Hopewell Rocks Park. And uh, the Hope Hopewell Rocks right over there, the initial flower pots that you come down. But if the tide's low, you can come all the way out here to Castle Cove, which has even more remarkable flower pots and other features to be seen, like you see behind me. And of course, earth caches. And of course, a Mrs. Monkey. Hi, Mrs. Monkey. So you can see the tide goes way out. These are the world's highest tides. And when the tide is out, you have amazing places you can visit, like this bay, this cove right here, where you cannot get to this spot when the tide is in. So again, perfectly timed visit makes all the difference. You can check the tide tables online so that you can time your visit perfectly and have an amazing experience at the Hopewell Rocks. Hoping to enjoy more of the marvelous Maritimes, we carried onwards to the Confederation Bridge, the spectacular span that bridges New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, Canada's smallest province, and home to Anne of Green Gables and the Confederation of Canada. After a quick chat with Canada's Father of Confederation, we simply fell in love with Charlottetown, PEI, one of the most beautiful cities in Canada. The next morning we continued our perusing of PEI with some seaside sleuthing for earth caches and virtuals that should be on everyone's bucket list. Guys, we are at one of the most remarkable wonders here in PEI, the Teapot Rock. It's, uh, you have to time the tide right to get here. It is a virtual geocache, but it's so cool. It's definitely worth making the time to get here. Here you are.
And since it was time for more smileys, we followed our geocaching maps inland until we found a sign. So if you're making your caching plans from PEI, one of the places you definitely have to make sure you stop is at the letterbox cache owned by Nimrod at his house. Very cool. Let's go check it out. So there's Mrs. Monkey up here with Nimrod. Hey guys, so this is Nimrod, the owner of this really cool letterbox cache on his property. Thank you for welcoming us to your home. Thanks for coming. <laughs> So you were sharing some cool stories with us about um, when people pull up and they're a little apprehensive about finding this. Yeah, I, I sit on the deck here and I see cars coming down the road and they slow down and stop for quite a while and then they slowly move on. And later in the evening I find that they've logged caches uh, further down the road but they didn't stop here. Should read the cache right up. <laughs> <laughs> so they're welcome to stop. Anytime, uh, as long as it's daylight. There you go. And then they'll have the opportunity to chat with you like we did. Hopefully. <laughs> so we're hoping to see you again next August. Uh, you heard you might have some plans? Definitely. Uh, my geo buddy, Nook and Cranny, and I are planning on coming out. We're going to stop in Seattle for uh, you know a few days and then do the trek up, get Geo Woodstock discover uh, Victoria and do what we can. Awesome. Well, thank you very much. Well, thanks for coming. And with so much more to see yet on PEI, it was back down the back roads to the beaches enjoying more sunshine, sand, and solitude until we'd had our fill of geocaches and it was time to fill our tummies at one of the world-famous lobster house buffets in North Rustico. Give it a twist. Give her a good twist. Soon sated on seafood, it was time to say farewell to PEI and wrap up this episode. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button below and don't miss our next adventures where we will take you for some more maritime magic through Nova Scotia with an extra special surprise for Oak Island fans. Thanks to our patron family who make each of these episodes possible. For more on the perks of being part of the patron family, check out patreon.com slash landmonkey.